Hello, welcome to James's pre-fight, post-fight MMA show, where we recap all the important things happening in the sport of MMA, and I, your host James, try to explain to you what's going on in the sport and make it as easy as one, two, three for you to understand. We hope you enjoy the show. Welcome back to Fans Assemble, everybody. We have a pay-per-view coming up this week, UFC 282, taking place in Las Vegas, Nevada, in the T-Mobile Arena. Something I always feel I forget to mention is the locations of these fights. Um, very interesting card, very strange card. The main event is very different. It was originally supposed to be Yidi Pahashka fighting Glover Teixeira. Now it has become, since Yidi Pahashka has like a catastrophic shoulder injury that the UFC says they've never seen anything like this before. He has vacated his title. Glover Teixeira opted out to fight Ankalaya, who is fighting in the main event now, because it is short notice and it, I believe it will be Glover's uh, you know, last couple fights so he doesn't want to go and compromise. So Yabohovich and Ankalaya will be fighting for the light heavyweight title in a five-round fight, the vacant title. Um, it's, it's a very big card, nonetheless, even without that uh, that main event, the original main event. So it's going to be a good one. I think it's going to be interesting. A lot of characters on this card, and it's the last pay-per-view of the year, so usually something strange always happens on those. So for this show, I am joined by my co-host, Mike. And, you know, we're still licking, some of us are still celebrating, some of us are still licking our wounds from the last card. But nonetheless, it was very good, and me and Mike enjoyed it, which I think in the end of the day, that's all we really ask for when it comes to UFC fights that sometimes aren't the most exciting or the most stacked. Sometimes. We're going to get on. Hopefully, we'll make it quick and easy for all of you to follow along with the show. So the first fight on the card, we're going to have Sort of like a fan favorite, Darren the Gorilla Till fighting out of Liverpool, England, versus Drekis Duplessis fighting out of South Africa. Darren Till, you know, quite a character, known for, um, he had a quick rise coming up, originally known for being a welterweight, then moved up to middleweight, has mixed, mixed results. A lot of people know him for his brash personality, his, um, some people say his exciting style, you know. That yeah, was different in opinions. But it should be a great fight because Duplessis is known for being a great finisher. So Darren Till is 18 and 4 and 1. He has one draw. He uh, is six feet tall with a 74 inch reach. He is, I believe, 30 years old. And he his last three, there's been a mixed result. So his last win was in 2019 against Kelvin Gastelum and MSG in a three round fight. And then he lost to Robert Whitaker in a five-round decision, and then he got submitted by Derek Brunson. Then you have Drakus Duplessis on the other hand, seventeen and two. So, and he doesn't have that many UFC fights; only three UFC fights. He is six-one with a seventy-six-inch reach, which may be surprising to many that he has the reach advantage in this fight. Darren, we're accustomed to him having the reach advantage, and I believe he is twenty. He's 28 years old. And his last, basically his last three UFC fights, he's won all three. Two of them by finish. One of them against Brad Tavares where he did have a couple of tricky spots in the first round. He tends to be kind of like uh, nervous. His first round is usually the worst. And then he, he was able to put it on Brad Tavares in the last two rounds. So this should be a very good fight. A fight where I think Duplessis is going to take it to Darren Till. And it'll be interesting to see where Till's at in this point in his career. Even though 30 years old, uh, such a young age, he does seem like his on the his trajectory doesn't seem that high as of right now. So, Mike, what do you what do you think of this fight when I uh, when it was first announced and you know researching it all? What do you think? Yeah, well, I, I think this is a fight where it's kind of you know a situation for Darren Till, where Darren Till has to do the convincing. Um, He's only, you know, he's a slight underdog. This isn't something he's being counted out of by anybody. Um, but there's been a lot of issues for, for Darren Till, you know, with injuries and, and a myriad uh-huh. of problems. 
that I think have really just, you know, broken his momentum. Um, he's a popular fighter. There are a lot of people who who support him and are looking mm. forward to, to come out and, and earn a big victory on pay-per-view and kind of get back in. Um, but I think this is ultimately a fight where he's going to have to come out and, like I said, do the convincing. Um, and I think a key way for him to really do that and set himself apart um, is probably going to be more with wrestling um, and not in the stand-up. I think that Duplessis, you know, the South African, is very, very um, well-rounded. I think he has numerous ways of beating you. Um, and I and I think it, it – creates really dangerous scenario where I think you don't want to end up in the stand up with him for too long. Um, but if Duplessis can keep till off of him um, and simply prevent him from creating any kind of advantage with wrestling and getting on the mat, then I think Duplessis is, is firmly on his way to winning this one. I think he just has too many things going for him right now. And, I, and I'm not sure what, you know, Till can do to to defend himself and stand out um, other than wrestling. I think that Duplessis is just better than him right now. And for Till, it, it creates an unfortunate situation. Right. So, so you're leading, um, you feel like do you think Darren's gonna break up his, you know, lack of momentum? Like, uh, what do you, what do you think? Like you said, like he has a lot of injuries. You know, he's been arrested a couple times recently. Yeah, I, I think I think this is one that could go the distance. Okay, yeah, I can see that hundred percent. I, I don't think Till will get a finish on Duplessis by any means. I think if he's gonna win, it's gonna be by decision, and he's gonna create a distinct, you know, separation via wrestling. Um, but I do have Duplessis going for a late finish and getting it done. Like I said, I think he just has too many ways to beat you. Um, I think he'll knock him out. Um, but yeah, I think for me, this one's just as simple as Duplessis is the better fighter right now. And uh, he's much better positioned to win this fight. Yeah. So I'm kind of uh, similar to you. I think Duplessis is, you know, he's probably you know, he's extremely well rounded. You know, good strike. Like, the striking could be close. I would lean maybe Darren's, like, a little bit. He's probably cleaner than him, but Duplessis is not like he's, like, a stranger there. And then he has good grappling himself. Um, I, I kind of agree along the similar lines where, like, I think Darren, for him to win, I think he just has to get off to, like, a really, really good start and then, like, never let Duplessis take back the momentum. Because we do see Duplessis, like, he'll have a bad first couple of minutes. He's kind of, like, a little jittery sometimes when he first starts off the fight. And then, you know, he, he has great power. Like, he, he catches guys when they're coming in, which I 100% see him doing against Darren because Darren, his defense isn't the best. Like, he, he has kind of has a tall guy problem where his hands drift away from his face. Uh, so I can see that happening. I can see Darren trying to pressure him. And I can see Duplessis going for wrestling takedowns. I think Darren, like you said, like he's been he has been training in different places, so I could see him being very open to wrestling to just break up the momentum of Duplessis. But uh, it, it's tough to say because I feel like Drake is he kind of like sometimes like lunges in to some of his strikes, and uh, it, you know and it's funny because his last fight we all thought he was getting tired and gassed and it looked like it, and he actually started fighting yeah. better. Tired, so I, I like you said. I think it's close on. Uh, like if Darren Till comes up, like the the injuries, the losses, maybe like the experience will make a difference between the two. Because this is Drake. This is like the only third fight in the UFC. I think um, if you know, even if the experience does count, I think it's still a very close fight. Uh, you know, you're going to plus these. I 100 percent see why. I could see him just like getting tons of momentum, pushing Darren back, catching him with shots, hurting him. Darren's, uh, you know, his Darren, until we forget his volume, sometimes it, he does drop a lot. Like, um, I'm sure you looked at it, Mike. Like, Darren Till lands 2.26 strikes per minute, which is very low for the UFC. And then Duplessis, even though I understand only three fights in the UFC and two of them didn't go that long, he's 6.55. That's a lot for anybody. 
So, and plus his accuracy is a little bit better. Of course, we have to take into account the opponent. But I 100% see him just overwhelming Darren and Darren never getting that momentum back. That being said, I am feeling a little bit risky and, uh, you know, keep it interesting. I'll, I will go Darren Till the uh, um, decision. I, I think uh, he may, like, shake him a little bit. I think when Duplessis tries to come forward, he may intercept him with punches and, and knees. And, you know, I'm kind of I'm taking a risk a little bit because, like you said, Darren, he just – Seems like a wild card right now. So that's yeah. what I'm leaning to. Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely, you know, I, I mentioned that I think Tilt could end up winning by decision. I, I, I feel that I think someone's going to collapse in this fight. In like, you know, somewhere yeah, in the I'm going to think, like someone's going to give out and lose it for themselves. And, yeah. you know, all the times and all the times doing this, kind of thinking about the fighters who need to win the most. Um, picking those guys has kind of got me into some trouble. Mm-hmm. So my gut <laughs> to kind of lean away from the guy is that, you know, you kind of like really just need the win. Uh-huh. You got the facts. Um, and right now I'm kind of just going to double down on Duplessis here and, and and see how it goes. But I think it should be an interesting one. Yeah, it should be fun. It should be a good one. I think Duplessis is definitely going to bring the fight to Darren. So, the co-main event, I am very, very fascinated with what Mike is uh, going through his head with this one. So, the co-main event, originally, so it's three-round fight, still a three-round fight. They moved up this one on the card. The polarizing, the, some would say charismatic, you know, we have disagreements. Patty, the baddie Pimblet, fighting out of Liverpool, England, versus Jared Flash Gordon, fighting out of Astoria, Queens. Uh, Patty is um, 19 and 3. He was the former Cage Warriors champion. So that's uh, for most people, it's a promotion, like probably the premier promotion in like the UK, England. The Conor McGregor was the champion there, Michael Bisping. So Patty, very well known to that English MMA market. He's 5'10. So he is pretty tall for 155 pounds. This is a lightweight. He's 73 inch reach. I believe he is. Um, let me check how old Patty is. He is 27 years old, with a 73 inch reach. He is basically undefeated. He he's undefeated in his last three, basically his whole UFC career. And then Jared Gordon, he is 19 and five, five nine, 68 inch reach. So he will have a very short, uh, very big reach disadvantage compared to Patty. Uh, he is 34 years old, and he has had mixed results. Like, he beat Leonardo Santos with his pace and pressure to win a decision, and then he lost to Grant Dawson, and he beat Joe Selecki. So, a little bit of mixed results with Gerald Gordon. I do believe he does have the much better resume than Patty Pimblett. Uh But there is some very big holes I think Patty could fill out. It's just going to depend on, uh, is Jared going to be on him so much that Patty can't take advantage of those, I believe. It definitely is one of those fights. Like, it's Patty's US, U.S. debut, his his first time on pay-per-view. It's a co-main event. You know, they didn't originally want him. They didn't plan this out to be the co-main event, but this is how it goes. So, uh, I think if he wins this fight, it'll be very, very big. Uh, so, what do you think of this uh, fight, Mike, in terms of uh, who's going to win, who's going to lose? You know, basically give us your preview of how this fight's going to go. Yeah, well, you know, you have the ever so inspirational and charming uh, Patty the Batty. <laughs> um, you know, it's one of those things, right? Like, you know, you're seeing the hype among casual fans, um, even among people who aren't even really fans of the sport. You know, occasionally maybe they'll tune into, like, the big fights. Yeah, um, he's gotten the attention of uh, Jake Paul, right. too. You're seeing a lot of kind of hype around Patty. And, you know, that creates a lot of room, you know, um, obviously, like we just saw with O'Malley, like, you know, when you have that hype on you, and then it kind of like looks like you're fed to the wolves, like, you know, well, this isn't like the equivalent of going up against uh, Peter Jan. I mean, yeah. Patty's favorite going into this fight, um, you know, this is Patty's fight to lose, right? Yeah, but at absolutely. the end of the day, like you said, he's coming into the U.S., um, pay-per-view, co-main event. Um, puts a lot of pressure on you. Mm-hmm. 
and it creates an environment. You know, Gordon isn't a joke by any means. Um, he's a very aggressive fighter, and he'll come in hard at you. And I think the problem here in this fight, though, for Gordon is he's stuck between a rock and a hard place mm-hmm. because he has to basically, you know, and he has to be aggressive to avoid getting, you know, to avoid getting finished in that sense. Like, you know, yeah, like I think he so. Needs to, he needs to move in and stay on him, right? Because if he tries to stay back, Patty's going to close on him. And we all know where Patty is, you know, equally dangerous too, like in the submission game. Like the last thing you want to do is, you know, fall back and then trip and fall. And then all of a sudden he's on your back, mm. you know, and gets into a mound and he chokes you out or, you know, finishes you that way. So it's kind of like you have to avoid all these different scenarios. There's no universal plan to take you on Patty. Um, and, I, and at the end of the day, I really think this is just a matter of how and when for Patty. Yeah. Um, what kind of, what kind of finish he's going to pull off? You know, I'd like to see – you know, it would be it would be insane if Gordon wins this fight because it's like right, wow, right. just to topple Patty like that quickly, you know, as he's coming in, like, okay, we gotta slow down. Patty ain't the next, you know, McGregor or whatever yeah. people want to say. It'll be kind of early on, right? Too, it'd be so. way, yeah, it would it would just be a massive, massive blow up um for Patty and for the whole, you know, sport as a whole. I mean, it would just unravel all of our current like thought processes about what's going towards and going forward in the future. So, you know, it would be really interesting to see just like O'Malley. Um, I kind of get, the, you know, um, Gordon kind of has his ability to turn himself into a star. And, and I know what I just said. I know what I just said about like Till right, and going with the guy who needs it more, like really, really like to try and like build himself up. But um, I do think Patty's going to win the fight. Uh-huh. I, I can't see it happening. I would be absolutely my jaw would drop. <laughs> okay. Um, um, but yeah. I'm gonna go with Patty. Um, I'm actually gonna go with. It's tricky because it's like right, like how is it gonna happen? But I'm gonna go with Patty in the second round. Uh-huh. And I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm gonna go with the knockout finish. Okay. Instead right. of the sub. That. Instead of the sub. Yeah, I, think, I think Jared Gordon is probably more susceptible to getting knocked out than sub. So I, I, I see your point. Yeah, I, I think he's just going to be too aggressive. I think he's not, he's not going to let himself get pushed back and, and, and mounted and, mm. and tapped out. I think he's too good and too strong for that. Yeah. So I have uh, extremely, extremely similar thoughts to you. I think, right, like Patty, his, his defense when it comes to like wrestling defense or like grab like staying out the bottom or like avoiding strikes is not the best so i think what you point out like i think jared is gonna have to like be aggressive enough that patty is thinking about what do i have to do to not to not lose to this guy instead of him thinking what do i have to do to beat this guy like you have to keep him kind of preoccupied because like you said like you know, Patty, I'm not saying, oh, he's like Oliveira or anything, but in in terms of like this lower, a bit lower level in the UFC, like he is very creative on the ground, uh, especially when it comes to like, you know, you think like, oh, you're pushing against the fence, like his last fight, like he was being pushed up against the fence a lot, and then he gets a takedown from there, and then he got the sub, or, you know, like his punches aren't the cleanest, but, you know, it's like, He's just going wild and crazy. And he is a bit bigger than Jared Gordon, I do think. Because Jared fought at 45. I know Patty did too, but Patty's like shredded though. Like uh you see his videos online, like he gets like really, really uh like overweight off of camp <laughs> Patty. Like it's like crazy. Um, so he is gonna be even with like you know, being shredded and all, he is gonna probably be a little bit bigger than Jared, quite a bit maybe. And I do think Jared Gordon, there is a path for him to win via decision, I think. Like, if he avoids all the stuff Patty's doing, like, I think if he wrestles him, gets him down, he can win the fight there and just keep Patty off his back and, you know, amount a little bit of offense there. And I think even Patty alluded to it. Like, he's like, oh, Jared, you know, he just keeps trying to scrape wins and things like that. So I, I do think so, but... Like you said, I think Pat, Jared Gordon, we've seen fights with him before. 
you see him winning, 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 and then all of a sudden he just gets clocked, and then he gets knocked out, or you know, like he'll put himself in like sometimes he gets in bad spots, like guys get his back, and I don't know if Patty could get a sub there, but you know, I know that Patty could at least win the round there. So I do think that um, it is a little bit of writing on the wall for Patty Crumblet to win this fight. I do think my KO is very, very probable. I think the way Jared comes in, you know, he's going to have to throw a lot of volume. And I do think that uh, it will give Patty opportunities to get the knockout. So I am agreeing with you, Patty Pimblet via TKO. And I do think that Jared's going to do well in the first round. And then Patty's just going to, he, he's Jared's going to feel too confident and bang, he's clocked with something uh, in the second. So I agree with most of your analysis, Mike. I think that's the way to go. If you think about Patty, but uh, I'll be honest, making this pick, I put on my my Mike Jake Paul fan hat, and and I just thought, is this really the end? This is how Patty Pimblet's the whole height thing going to end. Jared Gordon winning via decision? I don't think so. <laughs> I was like, he, if he loses, it's going to like blow up one day. That's he's going to like implode on everybody. That's why I think it, you know how it is. Like MMA, it tends to be like very dramatic and. Yeah, you know, stuff like that. Like McGregor getting choked out by Nate, right? It wasn't like Nate won like a decision or something. So I uh, I agree with you, Patty Pimblett, be a second round KO. That's the way me and Mike see it. So moving into the main event, you know, me and Mike, uh, like we said, it wasn't the main event the UFC had planned. It's a good one nonetheless. We got former UFC champion Jan Blahovic versus Magomed Ankalaya. Uh, it's very interesting to me too. You know, Jan was thought of in the very beginning of his career to be kind of like a journeyman. But now, you know, he's become a very pristine name in the UFC. And Amagaman Ankalaya, ever since he basically came into the UFC, everybody has been like, this guy is going to be a future champion. So Jan Mahovic is 29 and 9. He is 6'2", over 70 inch, 78 inch reach. He is, I believe, let me see how old. He is... 39 years old. So he is quite a bit older. Uh, and then he is 2-1 and one in his last three fights. His one loss coming to Glover Teixeira via submission in the second round. And then we have Magomed Ankalaev is 18-1. and one. He is 6-3, 75-inch reach. So there is a bit of a reach difference between the two. He is, I believe, uh, 30 years old. And basically, he only has one loss in the UFC. That was to Paul Craig, where he was winning the whole fight, and then he got subbed by a triangle in the last minute. You know, Paul Craig tends to do that. Um, very interesting fight, especially five rounds. We've seen Jan Bohovic go five, uh, one time, two times, uh, and he's been scheduled for five plenty. Magomed Ankalaev, I believe he's gone five at least once against Thiago Santos. You know, from Dagestan, but trains in Las Vegas. He's very good striking. Very, both guys very well-rounded. Uh, very different tales of their careers. So, and don't, don't forget, we they were both of them were not preparing for five rounds. So, that's something to look out for. So, Mike, what do you think when uh, you know this five round affair came to be? Yeah, I, I well, I think first, um, you know, Ankalaev has his most difficult fight, um, hands down. Definitely, probably the most difficult fight he'll face. Um, it's a tricky one to really think, and I know you were just talking about the whole five round thing. I actually think this is a fight that's going to last a long time. I think it's going to okay. go four or five rounds. And the real reason I think that is because it's tricky to imagine, right, Uncle Io getting knocked out here. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, Bakovic. You know, that Polish power. Yeah. Heavy, powerful hands. Um, he could finish anybody at any time. It's one of those things. So I think he's in a position where um, it's just a matter of if he can actually, like, land one of those heavy ones. And I think you know, Uncle Ayo is going to have to be the more technical striker. Um, you know, I think there's going to be difficulty for both of them to do what they do best against the other. And it's going to create kind of a standoff um, and a lot of uncertainty 
And I think that's going to keep the fight alive into the later rounds. And I think this really just goes two ways. Simple. Um, either Lakovic gets the finish. Okay. Gets it done. Just straight up digs in and finishes him. Or I think Ankalaev will get it done by decision. And kind of... Um, I don't want to use the term weasel, but... Um, you know, he'll... 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 Yeah. he'll, he'll He'll leak it out, and you know he'll just create a technical edge for himself, and just be more efficient. Simply, just be maybe not the prettiest, not the not the most entertaining, but I think at the end of the day, in the nitty gritty, he'll get it done. So basically, I think um, what you were saying about like him eking out wins. I understand because, like, these guys he fights are sort of, like, not the most, like, highest momentum. So you would think he would just go out there and put a really dominant performance. But some of them are, like, like you said, like, he's kind of like Tiago Santos. And he even felt, it like, in the middle of the fight, he was like, man, I'm fighting, like, this older guy. I should probably be getting more dominance on him. And he gets, like, rocked with a big shot. So I could see him, you know, it's a five-round fight, like, like uh, like that one, and I can see him kind of getting a little impatient with Jan. Also, Bohovic, he's like really good at like um at distance, like kicking the legs, forcing guys to come to him, and then he finds like really really good counter strikes. I could see that playing a part, but I just think um I think if Ankalaev gets his wrestling going early in the fight. I think that basically Jan, he's going to have a very, very tough time because Mohovic, like, his takedown defense is okay. Uh, but he has trouble with guys who can, like, really, really drag him down. And you start to see him, he gets a little tired and he gets a little gassed. And then, you know, he starts to focus on other areas and opens up the striking. So that's my main problem with picking Jan Bohovic. Uh, I don't, I'm not necessarily like, oh, I'm sure Uncle Ive is going to win. It's just more like, I think that's going to be a big question for Jan to answer. Also, um, but then again, right, like you were saying, like it's not like Uncle Live just goes in the fire and takes guys out. He kind of has to, like, uh, he, he st- keeps his distance, which makes it – that's kind of why he doesn't really go for that many takedowns. Like, he averages less takedowns than Jan Bohovic, actually. So, on paper, Jan is actually the more active wrestler, but – I just think that that may also create that whole, like you said, like it's going to be tense. They're going to be going tip for tap for a little bit of each other. But I just think that if Uncle Liam always has that wrestling to go back to, uh, that's my kind of like uh, my analysis on it. That's why I'm going to pick Uncle Liam. I think actually he, if he wins, there could be like a late finish, like a round four, if he keeps taking on down, if he keeps doing that game plan. But probably the safer pick is uh, Uncle Liam. Be a decision. I could see um I got to see Jan getting a TKO like round two you know round two, maybe round three, but that's how I see it. So yeah. So you said Mike, you definitely think it's gonna most likely if Uncle I wins, it'll have to go to the distance, right? Yeah, I, I think he'll get it done by decision if he does it. Um I'm kinda like fifty five forty five on this. I don't know. Like, yeah, I think that's a perfect like, way. Uncle Ayo is like a 200, you know, 260 point favorite. Um, I don't know if it's that far apart. Mm-hmm. You know, because but the I, behold, it's the experience. The, yeah. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm giving a slight edge to Uncle Ayo here, but like, I, I wouldn't be surprised by any means if it does go the other way. I'm just kind of thinking practically about this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He does have like some of the recipes to beat Jan a little bit, but. Like you said, like I think there may be a chance like his whole like safe approach could bite him a little bit, right? Because if he wants to get the takedown, he's gonna have to get close to him. So you know what I mean? Like he may get like a little zealous there. So yeah, all it ta- and that's the thing too. Like if, if your strategy is to win it conservatively, you know, all it takes is a couple big blows that knocks him down or takes him back. And the whole momentum of the fight, you know. Yeah, it changes, right? Shifts. So it's kind of like to play it, you know, it's one thing if you're like someone like Izzy, you know, or or Nanu or, or you know, someone of that nature, much more, you know, dominant um, competitor from a physical standpoint. Um, 
you know, but to play that conservatively in this big of a title fight, mm-hmm. you know, could extremely, you know, backfire on you, especially with someone with such powerful um, hands as Blagovich. So basically me and Mike are kind of, um, I think Mike said it perfectly, 55-45 is the best way to look at it, right? Blagovich, Bo- you know, he's technical in his own right. You know, he has experience. He also has some physical things going on. Like, he is a bit longer. He does fight long uh, with his punches. So, that could always create... Also, he has those great leg kicks that he does go back to many times in his fights. So, But me and Mike just think that you know, Uncle Ayah, he has the momentum. I believe the wrestling could come into play. Uh, you know, Jan does tend to have trouble with wrestlers. So, that's why both of us are leaning towards... Uh, on Kalaya on this one. And, you know, we should, a new UFC light heavyweight champion uh, from Dagestan uh, will be upon us again, you know. So that will be, it'll be interesting to see because, you know, with Yeri Pohashka not being the UFC champion, like, what if he comes back and, like, him and Ankalaya fight? That'd be kind of interesting. Like, you get, like, a wild man versus the, you know, Ankalaya, like you said, he's a little bit conservative with his approach, but. Hopefully, that will come to be uh, very soon. Hopefully, Yuri will be back. So, that is our show for UFC 282. Thank you guys for listening. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and as well as our Spotify and Apple podcast. It really helps us. Hopefully, we can get Mike a microphone with a mute button on it if we keep getting subscribers. Uh, and thank you to Mike for coming in a short notice. We were originally supposed to have a podcast with Raymond on the Spider-Man Miles Morales video game. He insisted that we do it. And all of a sudden, he just texted me and says, actually, I can't today. So He fell asleep. I don't know. He probably fell asleep again. So Too much Go back to our She-Hulk podcast where it took me and Mike like 500 times to get him on air. <laughs> so thank you guys for listening and see you all next time. Bye. Take care. Thank you for listening to the podcast. If you like what you were listening to, please subscribe to Fans Assemble. And if you can, please give us a rating. Do it for the audio world. They need you. Thank you.